Right, one of the first things I think I would say you need to do is get down to a cat level, which, and Herbie is about as low as he could go. So I'm going to get right down. In fact, I'm even lower than Herbie. And I think if I start speaking cat, he might look at me. Herbie! Try not to shoot on less than a 60th because you're going to get some movement, almost definitely. I'm throwing the background out of focus, so the concentration is very much on Herbie. Um, and it's a nice background, the colours are quite neutral. It's just greens and quite nice tones. You don't want anything too complicated and messy. Try, if you can, to focus on his eyes, because if the eyes are in focus, you're definitely going to get a picture that hopefully works. I might bring out the fishing, the fishing rod. Ha! What you also really, really need is two people, ideally. You need someone who's the kind of tempter and then someone photographing. OK, so what I'm going to try and do is see if I can get Herbie to sort of... What's that, Herbie? Catnip. Catnip. Is he interested? Is he interested? Let's see. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> Come on. Never work with children and animals. <laughs> He's here. He's here. OK, listen, that's actually a really nice picture. I'm actually going to shoot it quite wide so you know he's under a table. But what I'm going to have to do is crank up the ISO. So basically, when you have a, a situation where it's very dark, like this, you need to change the ISO setting. So just, make, just bring in more light. So I'm going to change it from 200, 200 um, ASA now, up to maybe even 600. Herbie! Oh, he rules the roost. If you do have to use flash, use it off camera, just to the side, maybe at 5 or 10 degrees or something like that. So it's just a trickle coming into the side, but where you can, definitely use daylight. And make the most of it while they're not moving. OK, so he's moved of his own accord which is always nice. He's actually got a tag on him that says Thomas, but I know he's called Herbie. Um, I hope he's called Herbie. Thomas! Herbie! Yeah, he's called Herbie. <laughs> so I'm really tight in on just his eyes and his whiskers. And I don't quite know what's made him wake up. Aren't you gorgeous? And give him a bit of affection, like a bit of love. Is that nice? There we go. Got all that hair. Right, now, absolutely smelling of cat. Um, I'm now have to, gonna have to go and photograph a big black Labrador called Dexter, and Dexter's got his own Facebook page. I haven't even got a Facebook page, so I'm looking forward to meeting him. And I'm actually a cat lover, not a dog lover. I'm hoping he won't sense it. Gimme, gimme, gimme. Now, I'm gonna just go for it on a long lens first, Gary. Go for it. Okay, what? What I should have done is set it on high speed right. shutter. Yeah. I felt that. Surprisingly, despite the fact it's a really dark dog, um, I'm not needing to overexpose it at all. And you often do with really dark animals. So I'm hoping this is just constantly focusing as, I, as he comes running towards me. OK, go. Um, but I won't really know until I look on the computer. I'm going to try to put a really wide lens on and do something a bit more close to him. Look at him! If I move, he goes like that, look. Uh-oh. I'm blocking you. I'm, I'm blocking you, aren't I? That's... That's the sick. So this is where you absolutely definitely have to have a dog, um, the dog handler. <laughs> oh! Goodness me. It's not a shot you put on your mantelpiece, but still. Amazing tongues. Woof! Woof! Dexter! Possibly. Yuck! Definitely trickier than cats. Much harder work, potentially a bit more fun, and you don't get scratched. But, you know, all lovely. It's been a real challenge, definitely.